What's up, guys? Rick from DFS On Demand here with a preview for the BMW Championship. It's Tuesday. It's not Monday like this normal video comes out. Um, a short week since uh, last week ended on Labor Day on Monday. So this is going to be a quick turnaround. I'm going to try to get this video out as quick as possible. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. We have to talk about the course. It's Aronimink, actually, very close to my hometown. So familiar with the course. Not the normal host of the BMW Championship, but we have seen it on tour before. This used to be the host of, um, it was Tigers Tournament. It was the AT&T National, I believe. Now the Quicken Loans National, which moved to wherever it is. Um, but this tournament we have seen on the PGA Tour, but we've not seen it for the BMW Championship. So I'm actually going to quickly jump over to my game logs because I have it pulled up here. 2010 and 2011 were the years that Arana Mink was played for the AT&T National, and we can go through and we can look at some of the names here. So obviously not all of these guys playing this week in a small field of only 70 players, but Justin Rose won this event in 2010. Um, Nick Watney won it in 2011. He's obviously not playing. Uh, Adam Scott has a third place finish here. Webb Simpson has a top 10. Just kind of scrolling through. Justin Rose. So Justin Rose has two uh, top 15 finishes in the only two years he's played it. One including a win. That's noteworthy. Ricky Fowler has a top 15. I just have this sorted by um, by DraftKings points right now. So as I, as I scroll down, I'm kind of throwing out a few names. But uh, a lot of these guys are not going to be playing this week. But I think that's a, a great segue into the cheat sheet and what we have going on at the top with DJ Rose, Justin Thomas, Brooks Kepko, Rory, and Bryson. Bryson, back-to-back -back champion, all over $10,000 this week. Justin Rose is priced at $11,200 and 25 to 1 to win this. Um, I just pulled these odds. They're pretty live. I don't know who has this at 25 to 1, but if I could jump on Justin Rose at 25 to 1 right now, uh, I'd do it. Not much of a, of a straight better, but that number is way, way wrong. Second place finished last week at the Dell Technology. Uh, we see him, we seen him finish uh, a second at the Open Championship as well. We talk a lot about Justin Rose on this, on this show, and for very good reason again this week. All right. This is basically the first time I'm looking at this with you guys. So where else are we going to go? Um, you know, I wonder if a lot of the ownership uh, goes to Bryson, right? A guy who's won back-to-back -back weeks in unbelievable fields. You imagine he's going to garner a lot of attention. So if he sucks it up, the guys around him probably, um, you know, uh, lose some of their of their ownership, right? You know, Hideki, who made a charge on the, I shouldn't say on the weekend because it's finished on Monday. Um, during the final rounds last week, Tony Finau is just a, a top 10 machine, a fourth place, a second place, a second place, and a 10th in three of his last four starts. These guys continue to churn out high finishes, but I don't think those are the guys we need to talk about. I think it's the middle and especially the bottom are the guys that we need to talk about. So let's do it. There's a, a couple of really good plays down here. Rafa Cabrera Bayo has a top 11 in three of his last four starts, uh, playing outside of his mind at $8,300. And in these, in these playoff events, I really like to look towards the hot hands. Guys like Cam Smith at only $7,800. Uh, guys like Mark Leishman, um, who have played well at Aronim Inc. in the past. He, he's won the BMW Championship in the past, or last year he won it. Obviously not the same course, but um, there's a lot to like down here. Terrell Hatton falling apart in the final rounds last week, but uh, again, another really strong finish for him. Um, we'll talk about Bubba in a second. Let me see if there's anybody else down here that is kind of riding this hot hand right now. Uh, if you believe in the putter of Adam Hadwin, two straight top 20s in the last two playoff starts. And CT Pan has popped up a couple times in the last three weeks. So there's definitely some options down here. Let's see if we can go to the strokes gained and find any additional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over to strokes gained last week at the Dell Technology. Okay. So... Um, 
I'm looking at this for the first time with you guys. We have it sorted by strokes gained total as we usually do. Bubba was the first one to lose strokes on the greens. Let's look at Bubba. Let's see if we can find him and see what he normally does in the last, uh, let's call it 20 weeks. He is losing almost two-tenths of a stroke. Let's see what he does longer term. Longer term, he's more of a neutral putter, very close to even. So if last week he lost even um, you know, three-tenths of a stroke on the greens, which is what he did per round, he might have some built-in upside. I, I say this every week, and he continues to, to pop off. Brooks Kepka is still putting below what we would expect him to, to based on his career. Again, another week where he lost basically four-tenths of a stroke. Um, he's normally gaining about three or four-tenths of a stroke. That's That could be a three-shot swing over the course of a tournament if he just regresses back to average. So I still think there's plenty of upside to tap into when it comes to Brooks Kepka, Who else? Um, off the tee is a, a really important stat for this week. Um, Bubba led the field last week in strokes gained off the tee. Uh, Kepka was fourth. We've got Abraham Answer coming in at uh, third place on this list. And then Scott Piercy, is that right? He played one round last week? I don't know. I'll have to look that up. Did he withdraw? Sound right? Um Anyway, there's, there's a couple of uh, Justin Rose, Rory McIlroy, all in the top 10. Cam Smith as well. So that's going to be important again this week. Um, we don't have a lot of great uh, tournament history to run through because the courses have changed all the time. So I'm, I'm going to kind of avoid that. But um, what I did do is I ran a little regression model on um, Arana Mink and the two years that we have there. Um, strokes gained off the tee, strokes gained approach were both pretty volatile, or uh, I'm sorry, both pretty important. So when we sort by strokes gained off the tee, John Rahm, $8,900. You know, I understand he's been kind of all over the place lately, but um, this number is, is, is pretty wrong on him. 8900 bucks. you know, quite honestly could lead the field in strokes gained off the tee. I, I also think uh, Molinari's is pretty uh, poorly priced here. You know, elite in the two categories that are going to be very important this week, which is strokes gained off the tee and strokes gained approach. He's basically top eight in the field in both of those. Um, him and Dustin Johnson are really the only two guys who can who can fit that. Maybe Bryson if we go out to like top 12 guys. So the fact that, you know, he's what, at least... $3,000 cheaper than DJ. He's $1,200 cheaper than, than Bryson. Um, just a few weeks ago, we were saying Molinari is the hottest player on the planet. So I don't know how much could have possibly changed in the last couple of weeks. But $8,800 for Molinari, $8,900 for John Rahm um, just seem off to me. Uh, if we look at our SDFA stat, which is the stat I talk about all the time that I really like, it's uh, strokes differential field average, which when you are looking at very strong fields, I really, really like this one. And um, you should see the top priced guys up here. So when you see, uh, you know, Jason Day is fourth, Tommy Fleetwood is fifth, and Tony Finau is sixth, and all those guys are, you know, no more than $9,500, um, they'll be guys I'll be working into my lineups. If you trust Stenson's health, um, you get him at $7,600, which is kind of criminal. Let's go back to the cheat sheet and check out Stenson real quick at 7,600 here. So 69th at the Dell Technologies, 20th, the last start before that at the Wyndham. Remember he had the withdraw in there, so he kind of scares a lot of people off. Um, let's just go look at Henrik Stenson real quick. I, I didn't want to make this video too long, but sometimes I just get in here and kind of just get going with it. Um, oh, whoops, actually, sorry. Clear out some of these years here. Let's pull up Henrik. He has probably not been this price. Yeah, basically ever. He was $7,800 at Augusta this year. First of all, he came in fifth place there. $7,800, but that's always soft pricing for the majors. He has not sniffed 
an under seven thousand dollar price tag uh, at any other point, even in the other majors, right? He's some, he's got three times he's or four times he's been over ten thousand dollars, you know, since March alone. So um, you're not going to get an opportunity to roster Stenson at seventy six hundred dollars ever. Uh, I guess he is, uh, you know, a little more worrisome because of the withdrawal recently and the lack of finishes. But if he wasn't worrisome, he'd be ten thousand dollars. All right, who else do we have? Um, we're for filling out down at the bottom. Uh, Keegan for approaches again, seventy three hundred dollars, probably too low. Uh, we're at the point where all the same guys are playing each week, so we might be saying very similar things each week here. Uh, but as far as guys down here. At the very, very bottom, it's pretty ugly, right? These guys are really going to need good showings to make it to East Lake, And, you know, C.T. Pan's the only guy who's really popped off multiple times in the last month. So uh, I guess if I'm looking to spend dollars under 7000 it's going to be C.T. Pan. And let's go back to our strokes gained here because I really do like this. Um, sort by strokes gained total. And we'll just go to the last, um, let's just look at the last five weeks, right? I want something pretty, pretty narrow. It gives us the PGA Championship. It gives us uh, the first couple playoff rounds. And who's on here? So Horschel and Snedeker. Um, Snedeker is uh, fourth on this list. Now that 50-90 shot was very helpful in these stats. Horschel was great until last week. CT Pan and Cam Smith both what top eight or ten under eight thousand dollars. Hideki and Rose probably top fifteen, just kind of guesstimating here. Um, so a couple of really good options. Geez, on the on the other side, just scroll down. The other side of it's pretty bad. Brendan Steele losing a ton of strokes. Xander, shockingly, all over the place recently. Um, he won't be getting my dollars at 7,700 and let's go back and end with the, with the odds here. Um, as we always do see if I can do this right. Taking a look at the Vegas odds. Um, Jason day, 16 to one, only 9,300 same odds to win as Rory McElroy. Who's 10,300, uh, better odds to win than Jordan Spieth, Tony Finau. Justin Rose, which we said was a sham. Bryson at 33 to 1. That's pretty criminal. Um, so Jason Day, really good value there. Adam Scott, uh, 25 to 1. John Rahm, 25 to 1. Both of those guys are under 8,000. Okay, so there, I guess there is a little bit of value here in, in Stenson because uh, Vegas has him at 33 to 1. Same. Okay, let me read you the 33 to 1, guys. This range is pretty big. Bryson. Stenson, Hideki, Cantlay, Patrick Reed, and Tommy Fleetwood. That range goes from $10,000 at Bryson to $7,600 at uh, Henrik Stenson. Wow. Usually don't see them that far off. Aaron Wise might be a little bit underpriced. Only $7,066 to 1 to win this thing. Cam Smith, uh, actually by this he'd be overpriced, but it's not by much. And, and the fact that his peers are just really, really bad down here. So there actually is a lot of value for this week. Um, there you go. That's the condensed version. I wanted to try to get this out as quickly as possible so that we can consume it and we can have some discussions. Um, what do we think about these guys, right? Like, what do we think about Rose? Are we all in on Bryson? You know, what, what are we doing uh, with Henrik Stenson. Is it a full fade? We don't trust him anymore. Let me know. Tweet me. It's at DFS on demand or leave a comment below. Talk to you guys soon. Good luck.